Hey, this is PJ with CLK Supplies. And I'm gonna be going over and talking about, and then later pinning up a Honda high security ignition. Now, if you're in the locksmithing world at all, in the automotive locksmithing, you know that Honda ignitions fail constantly. If this is new to you, well, the more comfortable and familiar, familiar you get with the Honda high security ignitions, the better, because it's something that you're going to be working on. Now, before we get into pinning up um, a, an ignition and talking about decoding the key and going through all of that, let's first talk about why they fail. And if you look at this picture here, at the top you're going to see a wafer that's brand new. The wafer on the bottom is you're going to see is an actual wafer pulled out of a used ignition that failed out in the field. Now, as you can see, there's just this one little tiny ridge, this one, let's call it a bump, okay, that is going to make that um, wafer work properly or not. And so it's what happens over time of the key going in and out, it wears it down to a point where it looks like that, and all of a sudden, the customer's key no longer turns in the ignition. Now, it's kind of a two-sided problem because that, the wafer as it wears down is definitely a problem, but if you take a look at this key, this is also a problem. As you can see, it's really worn down. You can see the brand new code cut key on one side and then on this other side, you can see the worn key. Now, so as what's happening is the wafer is getting wore down. At the same time, the key is actually getting worn down some as well. So a lot of times when one encounters a failed ignition, they just wanna replace the wafers and not replace the key. Now, when I get done pinning up this cylinder here in a minute, um, I'll, we'll put the old key in and you'll be able to see why that's not a good idea. Now, sometimes you feel like you, you might be able to get away with it, um, but in the experience of locksmiths who have done a ton of these, they've told me that um, they always end up failing and the customer calls them, you know, a week later, month later, their key's no longer working again and now, you know, it's a, it's a problem. So you wanna make sure that you're not only replacing the wafers, but you're also taking the customer's key and you're putting it back to factory specs. That's how you know you're gonna have a key and a customer that's happy. Now let's go ahead and let's zoom in the camera and let's get to work. All right, now as what I have here is a new ignition. Okay, so if you were able to get the, the ignition out um, and get the key turned over, that's great, and you, know, you can still use that ignition. But if you had to uh, maybe drill out the cylinder or use a method that you, you, know, you just feel more comfortable replacing it, um, you can, and so that's kind of what I'm gonna be mimicking here. Now this is the ASP C19-119 um, ignition cylinder. I'll put a link to everything I'm using here um, below in the notes. But so um, essentially they all kind of look like this and there's gonna be a roll pin right here um, on the back of them. So I've already got that roll pin most of the way out um, and I'll just go in and take in here and pull it out uh, the rest of the way. Tighten that up here. There we go. Okay, now once that happens, you're just gonna pull, um, take off this little back um, cap right here. Okay. Just like that, set that aside as well. And then from that point, the whole plug here is just gonna come out just like this, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna have a paper towel here, I'm just gonna wipe off um, all the grease here while I'm working on it and we can apply the grease um, at the end if we want here, so. Now, what you see here is what, is what you're gonna see is a whole bunch of these little wafers, okay? So, you know, they use these like finger slash, you know, split style wafers, except for at the very end, um, you know, th there's one full wafer. Now, the most interesting um, thing that I've heard from a lot of different people is that even on the OEM ignitions, they're always missing wafers. So like I just pulled this one out and as you can see, it doesn't have that full wafer here at the very end. Um, you can see there's grease in there, but there's no wafer. At the same time, I've heard a lot that on the OEM ignitions, these first two wafers right here, they are missing. Um, like I've talked to a couple guys that said that they've never seen an OEM ignition with these couple first wafers in here. I have no idea why that is, but um, that's what they're telling me. 
So now is what, is what we wanna do here is we want to take the customer's key and we wanna pin it up to this one, all right? So here, once again, is this worn out key um, that was a, it was a reel out in the field that it um, got wore down, no longer worked, and so they um, opened it up, they took the chip out of it, cut a new key by code, and you know put the chip in it. So I went ahead and I decoded this um, key on our uh, Futura Auto and came up with this code cut key right here, okay? <clears throat> I went ahead and I wrote all the bidding down so I can pin up this lock, but it's really important that you get this code here back to, this key back to original specs, all right? Now, if you don't have this capability and as far as decoding and all that kind of stuff, you know, probably the best option or the best advice I can give you is to take the existing key, pin up the cylinder, um, just one by one, just trying, trying to sight read it, you know, depths, you know, one through six, and figuring out a way to, you know, figure out what's close, right? So you're gonna wanna make it so where when you put a wafer in, it's like a little, you know, it's not, it's too, the depth is too deep, so it pushes in a little bit. You don't want it tough. And then at that point, you can kind of back work it to a point where um, you put them all in to where you know it's a, you know, they're a little, the wafers are a little too big for what it is because these cuts are gonna wear down. So that's really the best advice I can give you if you don't have the um, machines to actually, you know, just quickly decode and recut a key, you know, to factory spec. Now, once we have that done here, let's go ahead and um, the one thing I like to use when we're when I'm working on these is like I you'll see, you'll see in a lot of videos I use it's a, it's this little Wera screwdriver. Um, I really like it for like the storefront doors on um, using it for the set screws, but I find it's really the perfect size to get into these little holes right here um, on the um, on this ignition here. So. Is, is what you want to do in this case, since we don't we don't want to use this key, right? We want to use this new one that we made. Is what we're going to do is we're going to pop out all these wafers. So I'm just going to take my screwdriver here and I'm just going to push in. I'm going to pop out <clears throat> all these different wafers just like that. So there's two of them right there. Take these other ones. Like that. The next two. Now the best part, these actually have numbers on them so you can put them in your kit and reuse them on a different uh, job. All right, last two here. All right, now that we have this ignition lock empty, we can go ahead and we can start pinning it up to the cuts that we need for the key that we got when we decoded it on the Futura Auto. Now, the wafers and everything I'm gonna be using is this ASP kit, it's the A19-108. I actually have a video on it. Um, I go into uh, detail about it, put in the links below, but um, it's gonna have all the different sizes um, right here that we're gonna be using, including the springs, so. Set that aside. Now, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start putting the wafers back into this and um, I'll give you some good little techniques to use while you do so. So I like to start from the back and I really like using this scotch tape to do it. So is, is what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the wafers and we're gonna put them in. Now, you have to make sure there's a spring in every single one of these. And um, once you do that, let me pop up a picture of this wafer here. So. The side right here that has this big ledge on the side, that's where the wafer actually goes. So when you go to actually put these wafers in like that, they want to kind of like fall and kind of rock into not the right, the right space here. So is what you want to do, and you can see that one's kind of, it's going to sit in there all the way. So is what you want to do here is, that's why it's really nice keeping a screwdriver, um, this little screwdriver handy is, you're gonna go ahead and just kind of get it placed in there, just like that. It doesn't always wants to fall out of place. And then you can get your screwdriver and you know move it around and manipulate it to where it needs to actually um, be. 
Okay, so once you get that in like that, there we go. All right, so we have that one now in place and we'll go to the next one on that side. So we'll go ahead and put this one in the same exact way. Okay, and it's not like, once again, it's not really wanting to align perfectly here. So I'm gonna get this screwdriver in. I'm just gonna push it off down to the side a little bit. Just like that, there we go. Okay, so we got them both in there. You know, at this point, it's always good. You know, you can put the key that you're working within, you can stick it in and you can make sure, you know, it's gonna fit right or what, what have you. Now, after you're done with that, okay, and you know you have it right, is what you wanna do is take a piece of, a piece of this uh, scotch tape here and I like to tape it down. Now you wanna push it down just a little bit, but not all the way and you don't want it to cover um, any of the other holes here. So as you can see, I got it just over the these two wafers that we just got done. Oop, pop it up here, still a little bit of grease on this. So it, if you see there is what I did is I made it so I'm kind of mimicking like what, what it would be like in the lock to keep everything in place. And the reason why is I have to flip this over to the other side to put in the next two wafers. Now, not only by if I don't have that piece of tape on there and I'm trying to, to key it it to key it up and I have to stick that screwdriver in there, I could easily pop out one of these wafers that I just, you know, spent time putting in. So putting the tape on it allows you to keep moving and not worry about if um, you know wafers are going to start falling out. I've tried to key these um, without using scotch tape like this and I tell you it's like I feel like you know it's like two steps forward one step back two step forward you know and it gets really frustrating so just take some tape like this scotch tape here put it on like that and keep going. Now I'm gonna set this one aside here and not bore you with me going through every single one of those. And here is one that I um, went ahead and I keyed it up. Now this cylinder here um, is the bidding that I used from this um, old worn out key and I put on to this new um, factory code cut key. All right, so, so what we're gonna do at this point, okay, as you can see is like I can stick this uh, um, code cut key in and I can look and I can feel and I can see and I can I know that this is good to go and it's perfect all right in the same way when I take this um, old key and put it in here I can see how it's not quite perfect and a lot of these are like a little you know they're it, it it's not right it's not right and you know you have to wiggle it not good so so what we're gonna do now okay is I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just gonna cut all this tape off and we'll take a look at this here let me go through. All right. Now, as this tape comes off, obviously I'm gonna be really, really careful. Okay, just like that. At the same time, I'm going to um, put my uh, key in. You know what, putting your key in is a really good option here. Okay. Okay. Go and finish taking that tape off. All right, now there we go. So that's what it looks like here. Let me go ahead and pop this out here and put this, um, put this key in, the right key in right here. Okay, and there you go. So. As you can see here, um, it's nice, it's perfectly flush and looks great, okay? It's perfect on both sides and it's ready to be inserted back into the ignition. But so what I wanna do is I wanna, I'm gonna put my hand, my fingers on both sides here, I'm gonna pull it out, okay? You don't wanna, you gotta make sure you're protecting all your work in here, right? It takes a little bit to get all those in. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this um, worn out key. I'm going to stick it in here. I'm going to show you what's going on. So um, let's see. Let's get the camera to zoom here. There we go. So these wafers are no longer perfectly sitting on there. They're all a little bit off and I hope I'm doing a good job in that in the camera here that you can see that. So when you put it into the ignition, okay, you can move it up and down a little bit and you can get it to work. 
um, but it's not a great long-term solution. So this is why you definitely want to take it back to the factory um, bidding here. So let's go ahead and take that out. I'll put this key back in. So at that point, we're done, right? We can go ahead, we can stick this um, back into the um, ignition here, pop that up, and we are good to go. So thank you guys for watching, I hope it's helpful. Make sure you use that scotch tape while you're pinning up each individual um, set of wafers there. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.